Yo, what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Coffee Break and today we have the pleasure to chat with uh, small business owners, DK Movement. They're a clothing brand, but they also focus on the community. They're based out in Bristol, Connecticut. And today we're going to go a little bit deeper into what they do, how they started, and what they're all about. So stay tuned. All right, so what's going on, guys? We got Kelly and Derek from DK Movement, right? Um... When I saw you guys on, on on Instagram or Eddie told me about you guys, I liked what you guys were doing, but the highlight for me was that community work stuff. So I was like, wow, you know what I mean? It's cool to have a brand, good people, right? That are also impacting the, the community, right? Um, how, how did you guys get started? Like what, what made you wanna like develop this brand and and go in the direction where where you went into? You wanna go? You can start. Uh, I'll yeah, start. The brand was, it started, it was more than the clothing. So the clothing was something that was actually secondary. Um, the focus was community and giving back. So, you know, Derek and I have had, um, you know, rough childhood, even going into adulthood. And, you know, when he would tell me his story when I met him, I'm, I always used to say, like, you're so inspirational of what you're saying and how you went from point A to point B. And I think people need to hear that. Um, people need to understand where you came from, not a lot of people make it out of those situations, but they, but you can. So, you know, when COVID hit, you know, everybody was home, we were bored. We we're like, you know, what can we do to connect with others, right? So YouTube, we decided to start a YouTube channel um, and DK Movement was, was DK, our names and movement. It was just a movement to get everybody together and just to, to grow and to understand, like, how can you change your mindset? How can you be a better version of yourself? So we started the YouTube channel and we were just talking about our, our life, you know, what happened to us when growing up, you know, um, you know, what things did we overcome? And we put all the cards on the table. Some people don't want to admit things that they've done in the past, but in order to move forward, you got to forgive yourself and you got to move past that you learned. And, and we wanted to give people that kind of motivation and inspire them to do better. So that's where we started. Yeah, I mean, people are embarrassed to kind of, especially I would say in a minority community, yeah. you know, right? I mean, they're embarrassed to say where they came from or where they're at right now. Yeah. And what pe people don't really realize is that's just part of your story. That's just the beginning. That's not the end of your story. Yeah. And once people start to understand that you can change things ever so slightly by changing your mind and setting goals for yourself, right? And so Kelly, you know, she inspired me to, hey, just tell your story there. Tell how you grew up. Tell what you did to overcome, right? Nine years ago, I was an alcoholic, right? Bad alcoholic, two DWIs by the age of 20, right? Most people can't even admit that, right? I grew up in a household where my brothers and sisters and my mother's white and my dad's black. I didn't meet him until I was 15. I have a half brother on my father's side. We're six months apart, right? So what does that tell you, you know? Grew up, I was in a gang, bad neighborhoods. My mother was on crack cocaine. So people look at you and they're like, wow, this seems uh, pretty pathetic. No, because then when you look at where I'm at now, what we're doing together to help the community and to encourage other people to move forward. You know, I work for a bank, um, a very large corporation. I'm one of the supervisors there for the past 10 years. I make over six figures. So if you're gonna be embarrassed where you come from, don't, because not many people, you know, embrace that and overcome those things, right? So you just gotta start talking about it, get the word out, talk about family, family structure. Like we were never married yet, but we're on our way because of COVID. You know, we have a mixed family. So we talked about that on YouTube, right? How do you blend a mixed family, right? It can work if you have great communication, you have a partner that is willing to listen, right? You have some traditional family values put in there. The kids are flourishing, right? Some outside influences may not like it, right? But they're flourishing, they're doing well. And, and people have to understand, if you can work together with your significant other to just to, just to do better in life and help others. Um, and that's, that's our that's message. Good. No, I like that because it, it's almost, it almost reminds me of my story too. Like, you know, I used to be a little bit, like even saying I grew up in the Bronx, right? It's like, and then you're working at a, in a corporate office and then they're looking at you and like, oh wait, what school did you go to with it? And I'm like, right. you know, I didn't go to this school. I didn't, the one that you expecting I'm going to, but. Um, and then saying the Bronx, you know what I mean? Because of the reputation or whatever. So after a while, then you, you just be like, you know what? The 
freaked this already. You know what I mean? Like I came from the Bronx, but look at where I'm at now. And that's such a good point. And I think that's what a lot of the younger kids need to understand too. That it's like, just because they're born in these crazy areas doesn't mean that that's where their end goal is going to be. You know what I mean? It's all in perspective and, and how you go about stuff. So then when you guys started the YouTube channel, was that like your main focus or then like the, the fashion part? This is a funny story. Yes. So, 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 okay, so we, we're doing the YouTube and stuff like that. And, um, you know, we like to see like immediate results and we're, yeah, and we're, we, we, impatient we're impatient. We're digging. We're like, okay, we're not getting this. What is going on? And then, you know, TikTok came. So it was like, oh, is God. this like a team bop app? Like we didn't really understand, but we started digging deep and researching. We're like, oh, let's just start a TikTok page. And this, the TikTok page was Hilarious. to make people laugh. So, you know, the YouTube channel was more serious and, you know, story. and telling our story and stuff like that. But we were like, you know, also we're, again, we're home. COVID and then we're home together. So we wanted to show people like as a couple, I mean, some people don't want to be with each other 24 seven. We were with each other 24 seven. And we you said, well, how are we going to make this work? We're just going to make each other laugh. So we just started filming on TikTok. Adult humor. Adult humor, you know, like adult scenarios and stuff like that. And um, like we built up a following over 300,000 followers just by being ourselves and just on TikTok? On TikTok. Just, wow. and, and, and we could have went more. We had we, we stopped for a while um, because we got so busy. But it was just us having fun and just like, hey, let's just show people and give them a good laugh. Like, we, we show our videos to our, you know, people now and they're just, they're laughing. They're like, I can't because it's just, you know, 12 second video, but it made their day. Even when we were on TikTok and we would go live, we would have people tell us like, you know, I, I'm having a bad day. And sometimes I just go and I go to your page and watch your videos and it would change my, and that, that was the purpose. You know, that was the purpose. So in January of 2021, um, that's when the clothing line we started. started. Discussing how, can we, how can we financially raise money to give back to the community? Because, you know, we wanted to do things, but we need the money to do it, right? I mean, things that we were doing was coming out of pocket. So my background is fashion. And it's I'm originally from New York. I've been here for six years. Um, and I grew up, you know, modeling, um, radio host, red carpet host dealing with fashion, magazines, runway. So it was like, oh, well, let's just get into clothing, right? And um, and what people like, joggers, it's comfy. Everyone's home. Yeah, what so we what we have on now, jogger says t-shirts, jackets. So let's just start a clothing line. And I was new to that. I knew the, the how to wear the clothes, yeah. but now I have to think about what do I want to do in terms of design? And we just took our personalities and, and put them into the clothing. And that's how the clothing line started. Oh, in the meantime, too, we bought a, a half a million dollar house during COVID. Right, so during COVID, like right. how many people do that? Right. So that's another thing. We don't want to, you know, yeah. say we also bought a brand new house during during right. COVID. You know, yeah. during this whole time, we're starting a business Why people are afraid. We're, we, we're like, listen, we got to get out. We got to do more. You know what? Right. Yeah. We're pushing forward. You know, and, and in the clothing business has opened up so many doors for us, right? I mean, I mean, the amount of people we know, senators now in Connecticut, the, uh, my, I mean, politics, the helping people down in Davis Drive, which is a local area where, the out, yeah, in Bristol, we're kids. We've spoken at the Boys and Girls Club, like so many different things wow, we've done. So good. And we continue to do. That's so good, yeah. Because see, like we, the 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 clothing brand is a, it's a it's a means of connecting also, it, right? It, with, it's like with coffee. It's like having yeah, coffee. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Exactly same thing. Yeah. It opens up the door. It gives us credibility, um, and now we're so interconnected into the community in such a short period of time. Kelly and I. Um, we're, we're we, we forget, we forget. Yeah. It's, like in a it's been a short of period of time. Six months of just maybe six, seven months pounding the pavement and just, I mean, you know, online learning. I learned how to build a website, the social media aspect, just not being relentless and just knowing that what we're doing is, is for the good and just not giving up on what we want to do. We serve on all we, kinds of boards. boards. We just stood, we stood focused. You just got to stay focused and just remember, you know, of course you have your, your times when it's just like, you feel like you're just running into a brick wall. Right. And it's like, how do we break through that wall? And we were like, well, because we're just not going to give up because what we're doing is is helping people. Yeah. And, you know, the Agape House um, outreach in, in Bristol, um, we met the person who runs, you know, the daily Matt operation, Norton. Matt Norton. And we just was I mean, he's a gift from God and what he does for these homeless people. And 
people see homeless every day, right? And we just pass them by and sometimes we don't even see that they even exist. But we try to tell people, you never know. I mean, I was living out of the suitcase in New York at one point. Yeah. He was bouncing around the show. You never shelter, know. Moved 27 yeah. times. You never know when you could be in that situation or one of your loved ones. So don't look down on, on, on yeah. those people because it could happen to anyone. And we just wanted to bring awareness and show them that people actually truly care. Now you can't help everybody. There's no, some people that, right. Them, but the ones that want to be helped, you got to identify who, who those people that want to be helped and, and just show them some support. Yeah. We know now COVID has made everyone kind of like socially scared. awkward and yeah. scared and you know, this anxiety. You don't know, you could just say hi to somebody one day and that could change their whole thought process for that day or just a smile. And we need to remember that. We, we lost the empathy, our children yeah. are lost in, in social media. Being from the social media entertainment world, um, I like to speak to the youth about the perception of what you see on Instagram. You know, they want to live up to what they, that picture or that video, it, it's fake. It, your Instagram's a liar, it's not real. And our kids look up to those people that they see on Instagram. They probably looked up to me at one point. I mean, if you saw my Instagram page, I'm on a red carpet with a mic, beautiful, with celebrity, but I was depressed and drunk. I'll just be real. I was, I'm a recovering alcoholic since I met him. I haven't drank in five years. I got lost in that world and alcohol was just, it was, is what I went to to deal with my issues. But did I show that on Instagram? No. So I like to tell the youth, listen, just be yourself. Look up to the people within your community, like people like us. You know, I'm not saying don't, you know, embrace those celebrities or whatever, but they wouldn't be there if it wasn't for us, right? Yeah, yeah. Buying their records, watching them on the TV. The support. The support. So support the people in your community that are really making changes for you. That's right. You know, and, and that that's important. That's very important because it's like, you know, even going back to the aspect of social media, right? We got these kids that are identifying themselves through someone else's lenses, right? Instead of identifying themselves as, okay, what what good can I do, right? Because the, like social media, you know, it's a cool thing. It's like everything else. It, it's good until it becomes bad, you know, depending on how you use it, how you engage with it, and, and how you turn it around like you guys did, you know what I mean? Like you took a, 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 a life story, you know, that was kind of tragic to, to some people, but and then you, you you turned it around and it's like, wow, you know what I mean? Like something good could come out of it. You know, it's it's sad in some ways. We, we have an accountability issue, um, plain and simple, right? You always hear me talk about family and there's lack of family, right? And it's been destroyed and we need to bring it back because it's proven over and over if you have two people in a household, whatever, gender, race, it doesn't matter. Yep. They do better statistically. And that's just not me saying it. Um, it's backed up across the board. The kids don't have accountability. So that's why if you look, they join gangs. Like I said a little earlier, I was in a gang until I met my father, right? He, even though he had his own issues. The problem is until kids take responsibility or parents take responsibility about how they raise their kids, we're gonna continue to have these issues. We're gonna have like in Hartford recently, another couple shootings, right? Because they're in gangs, because they don't have any self-worth or self-love. And that's what Kelly and I are always about. We're talking about uniting the community right? People in general, keeping family together. And that's what our clothing line's about, right? And that's what everything we do within the community, Kelly's part of the NWACP. She just was voted in as one of the vice chairs, okay? Um, I'm on the, more, on the men and boys committee. So, you know, helping boys and men out. We're, she's on the chamber of commerce. Um, I sit on a diversity council. She sits on a diversity council. This is all within a seven month period that we're able to do these things, right? We're having meetings with multiple people in, in, that are in high ranking positions within Bristol and outside of Bristol now, right? So we're, we're, we're busy, we're expanding, we're actively doing things and we are getting recognized for it. But the thing is people have to realize they have to support the community first and then start to build up. Yeah. But you have to look at yourself. Once you agree, once you start looking at what you could do better with yourself, then you can start helping others. I wasn't there five years ago. Maybe I wasn't even there three years ago, but I'm there now and Kelly's there now, and now we can continue to build and help our community and, and, and take this to a different place, have control over our, 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 our families, have control over where we wanna go yeah. in life. And that's that's what we preach, and that's what we, we feel is important. No, yeah, it is important, and it's something that's like, it's, it's missed, right? It, it's there, you know what I mean? But people are not gravitating because they don't think it's cool or whatever. I'm not saying we got to do things that are cool, but you, you know, we got to grab. We, it's like almost like you know, reading the uh, your your room, reading the room, seeing what what's needed. Especially if you're gonna be in specific. Not every urban community requires the same amount of like, you know, uh, resources. They may need 
different, you know, than than Bristol. Uh, Bridgeport might need, you know, like the, something else, you know. So it's just a matter of like reading your your community, which I think you're doing well, and um, and being able to just like go through it. The good thing is that it's I think throughout this whole even interview, if there's something to even that somebody's gonna get, is just to start it, do it, and don't look kind of like back to your past, right? Yeah. Like don't allow the, the the past or your experiences to affect you know what you're trying to do or where you're trying to get to, because as you do it, the results will show by itself, right? I'm I'm a faith based guy, right? So I, I I you know we we trust we believe in God. We know God is 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 um um is an important aspect too that we need in our lives to to keep you know going forward. And one of the things in Scripture it says, right? You 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 will know them by your fruits, right? So. If we see you guys and you know you're affecting the community because people are gravitating to you, then that means you're you're leaving a legacy for other people. You know what I mean? To to adapt to and connect to, which I really really like. You know what I mean? That in a matter of seven months, you guys were able to like that's incredible. Like that that's so like amazing to just like, and then in the middle of a pandemic at that right to start something up. So like, as you guys were doing all these things, like what were your like hardest moments i know like a lot of cool things have come you know through this but what what have been some challenges that that you overcame to continue to to keep pressing forward through you know what what it is still to today getting getting in the door what you say mm -hmm. getting into the door to meet with people that was the hardest I would say, I would say. right it's just trying to find that right connection and and, and getting that initial they let you in, you not know. Taking no for an answer. Exactly. Uh, so, like so with that, not taking no they goes with, with it goes with, you know, you're like, okay, I'm calling this person. Why they're not calling me back? And then, you know, you don't want to doubt what you're doing. Like, are we going about this the right way? So, is that conversation back and forth? Because we're only you. Well, let's be honest, right, honey? It took us a whole year. We were waiting on the Boys and Girls Club. We got connected with our local, right. you know, local um, economic community board. Nothing came of it. Emails were sent. Yeah, we right, were waiting. We, a whole year. And finally, we just got aggravated. <laughs> we spoke to one of our local council yeah, uh, members, like, Sue, you know Sue Tyler, yeah. great person. She started introducing us to people because we told her what was going on right at Ed's place in the coffee shop, and it changed. It changed from there. That's when you, you heard about us. That's right. when it changed. Because, because we, we said, finally we had enough. enough. Yeah, we were, like, we were being too enough. nice. And like, you should be nice, right? Because we're out to help people. But sometimes you have to be aggressive and assertive. You know, I talk about it all the time. We're faith-based also, but you also can't just rely on that. You have to also go out and use that and use your do. You have to do. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think we're waiting sometimes. We wait too long as minorities. Yep. And I'll, you always hear me this. We, we think it's just gonna come Don't in our hand. Yeah, it does, but the doors are there. You just have to go out and grab them sometimes. Yeah. Open up the door, kick the door down, as Kelly say, yeah. and then walk through it. Yeah, it's it's, it's so true. That that that's good support. Sense. Yeah, because I would tell him yeah. nobody's gonna come. When we, we bought the house and then we're sitting in the house and we moved from Plainville to Bristol, so it's like, all right, so how are we gonna? Like, I'm not from here. He's from Bristol, yeah. but now he moved back to Bristol. How are we gonna get to know people here in Bristol? And sitting in the house is not going to get us to know people in the Bristol. And I'm like, we need to, like, start. He didn't like going out. And I'm, I'm used to networking because of yeah. what I've done. I hated it. He, I mean, it was not like anymore. pulling. So you say the most, it was pulling him out the door. See, for her, it's that. For I was like, let's go. And it's like, complaint, complaint. But when we get there, he'll be fine. But it was just the initial trying to get him out. And I understood why yeah. he wasn't comfortable at first. He wasn't even comfortable getting in front of a camera. Oh, yeah. And I had to, like put the camera in front of him and and because I was used to it so yeah. it was just like teaching him to get him comfortable and once once we got to that point it's just like at this point we just walk in and it's we're gonna you take know, over. I'm glad you brought that up honey because I think the thing is in order for men to be great in my opinion yep, yep. you have to have a great woman beside that, you. Without her my story would never been told. I would have never connected and networked and you know made to help make these connections that we're making now right now i just go out and we make the connections right yeah. i speak about what the truth is and they like to hear it yeah. but without kelly it, i wouldn't i don't think i would have taken it i've been successful in other areas you know overcoming alcohol losing 100 pounds all these different things doing great at my job but even this year i've done even greater at my job yeah. why because they even seen even more difference in me yeah. because all the things i'm doing in community and all the things i'm able to do at work yeah. is translating all because of even more confidence. And, and honestly, no jokes. It's because Kelly forced me to do something I didn't feel comfortable doing. No. It, it, it's a, it's but a, you needed to pull me out of my system. comfort zone. It, it is, and I'm gonna I'm piggyback right. off of that because as a woman, yeah. 
okay? As a, I'm black and Puerto Rican. I was a single mom, obviously, before I met him divorced. And you know, now in this day and age, we're told like being independent and oh, I could do this all by myself. Why? Why would you want to, you know, I'm 44, I'll be 45 in February, when I met him, 38, okay, and already, you know, divorced with my two kids and thinking, like, nothing ever gonna give, life is over, I'm just gonna be this strong black woman, and, but why, why, you know, I, I found him, and he helped change my life, because without him, I wouldn't have stopped the drinking and all the nonsense that I was doing, and find, and find peace with myself, and know what, an ex-drinker, right? Right, I mean, our birthdays are... He's the 25th, I'm the 26th of February. 78, 1980. Yeah, so yeah, we're two years apart. And our personality is the same. And we help support each other and we kind of piggyback. So, you know, women now, with this independence, you could still be independent, but you could have someone with you How to much support. greater can you be? I'm sure we're, 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 wife, Yeah, right? we're a better Same. force together. Like, I used to be in New York, to that. kicking down the door, as I told him, go because I was a red carpet hostess, getting my name out there, you know, in the business by myself, though. But why not have somebody what and when they, we do it they, together? They know us as, as a honestly. power couple. They say the power couple. If I'm not there, they go, where's Derek? Yeah. If yeah. Kelly's not there, where's this is the truth. This is what they know us as. We go everywhere together and it works well. Yeah. It works, we feed off each other. And it shows and, and this is what we need more of, right? We need to we show need this time. We, we need, need that that's what we gotta show. You know what I mean? That 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 just with just two. What two can just do, right? Like and and, and it's just like the, the community factor, yes, it's great. But when you got the, the support factor and the accountability that you have with one another, like I have with my wife, she has with me too. You know, she's like my meter in a way, you know, with, with certain, and, and that's what you need, right? That, that's what you need. And once you got that, you already have a whole lot. You're already a way ahead of the game for a lot of people, you know? And then it's just a matter of, of going to it little because where, where, where you're weak at, she's strong at, where she's weak at, you're strong at. And and that's what that's what you need, right? You need that balance, and that's what's going to help you guys keep. Talk going. about that. We talk about that. Yeah. Like, right. well, honey, you're better in this area than me. Right. Yep. You're better in this area than me. And, and you know what? At first, I was a little uncomfortable with that, to be honest. And then I just started embracing it. Listen, you're just better in that area than I am. That's okay. Yeah. Um, but I'm better in this area, and that's okay. So now we're no longer having that struggle at all, yeah. right? Now it's just we just kind of flow, and it comes out easy. No matter what we do, we walk into a room, we know our, our roles. I hate to yeah. say we know our roles. Yeah. She handles herself very. Very well I handle myself very well and we get productive stuff done to where we're having meetings with people to where now they're inviting us to things in order to get things done within the community and above right here in Connecticut you're gonna hear a lot from us in the next couple months coming I mean not just the clothing brand I mean yeah we're doing well there too but I mean honestly we're about to make some significant changes right in Bristol uh, legislation Bristol and in Connecticut you're gonna hear a lot from what we're doing well wow. That, that's so good and I, I can't wait to to hear to hear the you know what's what's gonna come along I'm definitely gonna you know pass it on share all this stuff you know what I mean I I know this is not gonna be the last time we're probably gonna engage in, in conversation and stuff but um I do appreciate you guys you know appreciate coming along coming through I know it's a long trip I go to Bristol all the time I, I used to work here uh, in Shelton yeah uh, back in the day uh, when AmeriQuest mortgage so the subprime lending okay. so I used to one of the you know best jobs I ever had before the yeah. sub market you know, crash, but still great place to live there. Nice. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, but it's it's, it's great, man. It's it's a, it's a pleasure to to have you you know come into the studio and and just share a little bit of, of information. I want to thank you guys for for the opportunity to for for coming down here and um in every coffee break, right? It's like we this this whole season we're celebrating the people. Like I told you earlier, you know we I I want to celebrate you on the channel and and what you guys are doing as as a couple, you know, um for the community um for the people right that that not many people are doing right and it's it's very important that even if you're affecting one community no, you're 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 touching a lot of lives right um but what we also do in the in the channel is just like we try to give people nuggets and i'm pretty sure we gave a ton of nuggets there but if there was entrepreneurs right watching this now looking to start something looking to do something whether they're single whether they're a couple or whatever like what's what's an advice you know you would give to them that are watching this what, video what now for me personally is go with what your passion or my passion i know her passion i'll let her speak but it's helping people um so when you're going to start something as being an entrepreneur so whether it's clothes whether it's um you want to become a writer you want to become a singer of course you know those avenues um you have to go where your passion leads you and where your skill set leads you. And then you have to do. 
Yeah, I, I would agree. And, and I think also just don't give up. I mean, we hear that all the time, but I mean, there's times when you really just feel like nothing is working. And sometimes you need to take a step back and stop for a second and reevaluate re and take constructive criticism for others. Don't take it, you know, sometimes something is just not going to work. And don't take it personal. If it's not working, then just try something new and be okay with that. I think like we, um, we're, we're, oh, sometimes we, we set ourselves for failure before we even start. Mm -hmm. And we have to realize that we, we need to, you got to go in with an open mind. And, and you just gotta put all, you know, put all your nuggets that, you know what I mean? Yeah. In that basket, don't just, and then if it doesn't work, there were some things that we had, ideas that we had, and it just didn't work. It was like, it's not gonna work for us because it wasn't where we were passionate and we let it go. Gotcha. And That's we moved okay on. And okay you gotta be okay with that. Right. I'm leave you one, one last thing. Nugget, actually, yeah. now it's because you just trigger something I say a lot is, you know, the most successful people, you can look at Colonel Sanders, all these different people, they've been bankrupt, they failed yeah. many times, and they just keep going they forward. Keep going. So even if your first initial business, whatever it may be, doesn't work, don't stop. Yeah. Because you never know that second business, that third business you try, honestly, could be the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's so good. Yeah, it's good, and 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 it's just and and I go about like a lot of the things that this was so that this one this interview is pretty interesting because it's like it, it follows a lot of the morals and a lot of things that that we do as a home, as a family, as, you know, and even in my entrepreneurial mindset views. So that that's good to always connect with other people that are doing the same thing and even more, right? Because you 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 learn from from what what people are doing, and um um. And yeah, man, I'm I'm super excited as to you know I, th th this has been a really good time to to connect with you guys, and um um and see a little bit more right like I could see you through social media, right. but then in, in person the interaction the the you know the, the vibe of the of the people you know what I'm saying is a little bit different, but um I like what you guys are doing um and I, I you know I pray that God continue to bless you guys the 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 movement and. Yeah, man. And just shedding light on yeah. what people are doing out there is a huge significant, right? So every, like you said, every little thing that you're doing to help others then translates into a larger thing, right? Yeah. And you, I think you hit on it just a moment ago, the ethics and the morals, right? right? If you're ethical and you're moral, you're always, you're always going to overcome those lies. It's going to be harder though, but right. you can overcome those people that are not, right? Yep. You just got to push a little harder, be a little bit more aggressive actually, yep. and then just keep plowing through. Eventually you'll get to where you want to be. Yeah. It may take a little effort, but, but effort, without effort, you don't have anything accomplished. Everything, Everything requires work. work, right? So that's it, man. And so, yeah, man. Thank you guys again you for 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 you know shedding some light on some things. You know what I mean? I'm I'm super excited to see what you guys got coming on. You know what I mean? As far as con co like the community and the whole as Connecticut as a whole entire right, state, that's, that's gonna be big. And um um I want to make sure I highlight that that um that stuff when you guys start doing it. Would we'll tag me and you can tag me in anything. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll make sure to share it and push it out there. But um. Yeah, man, like every other, you know, episode that we always do, you know, never settle with being good when you've been meant to be great, right? That's the whole entire thing, right? So um, we'll see you in the next one. We'll see, definitely see you in the next one. This is Kelly and Derek from DK Movement. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. So there you have it. That was Derek and Kelly from DK Movement. I hope you liked the episode. I hope you like what they were able to, to shed light on and speak about. Um, if you see, they were focused on community, which is amazing. Um, but like every episode, never settle with being good when you have been meant to be great. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate if you do hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and, um, uh, follow us, you know, I'm going to continue to pull out these videos, these interviews with some really cool people that are really doing some cool things. And we want to celebrate them, uh, with this new theme on celebrating people with coffee break episodes. So thank you so much for those who have been following and who have been, you know, you know, hanging with me since the beginning. So thank you so much and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.